fourth smooth stone of religious liberalism. All relations between persons ought ideally to rest on mutual free consent and not on coercion. Ruth the Moabite says to Naomi, where you go, I will go. Your people will be my people. Your God will be my God. It's a story of family tragedy and women in, not only in sorrow, but in a precarious and vulnerable economic situation to be widowed. Ruth had made a commitment to Naomi's family by marrying her son. And she honored that commitment even after his death. Where you go, I will go in freedom because we are each other's, because I made a promise. Your people are my people. We are each other's people. In Judaism, the story of Ruth is often told to honor the commitment and the faith of converts, people who are not born Jewish, but who choose it who live according to the teachings of the Torah, who are and ought to be welcomed fully into the community as a community of conviction and ritual and history, but not necessarily of blood. I hear this story and I smile. Ruth's free choice to stick with Naomi and the good things that come her way. You'll hear in that story, no bargaining with God, like in so many others. No crying out, if I do this, will you spare my people? If I don't do that, will you change my circumstance? In this story, just the very human act of making a promise in a difficult situation. In these days, the function of a church of a religious community does seem pared down, doesn't it? To that very human act of making a promise in a difficult situation. I mourn when you mourn. I rejoice when you rejoice. I will honor the ways that you know and name what is holy and you will honor mine. I will sign up to bring you lasagna when the email goes out because you just had a baby. I will come to your mother's memorial service even though I didn't know her. I will show up with you in the streets and for the food drives and for the voter registration. I will live as if you are my people, as if we are each other's people. There's another way to hear that story of Ruth and Naomi. Not that Ruth is making a huge choice or sacrifice, but that she is stating a fact. Instead of Naomi, your people will be my people. Your God will become my God. Naomi, your people already are my people. I know it to be true and therefore I will live as if it is so. This is the purpose of the free church too, to have a place, a community, a tradition, a path of connection to the spirit that reminds us that we are always and already for each other, always and already interdependent, always and already each other's people in life, and in death. Thank God for the people I did not select. Thank God for the community I nonetheless choose freely to participate in and to love. My colleague, the Reverend Teresa Soto offers us this poem. A year is something like one of those Jacob's Ladder toys. A single action sets a block to falling. Is it falling up, falling down? This year has been flexed between periscope, kaleidoscope, and telescope. One day crashed into the next, clack, 
one challenge into the next clack. And what we have learned is that the harder it is, the more care we take, leaning into the strings that hold us together. Because no matter what happens, clack, we remain together, interwoven, such that when our covenant holds, we are the embodiment of the life force that rises between us. And when it lies broken between us, damaged with arrogance and hate, we are the possibility of still rising, of turning the block that falls away into the energy of the mutually assured ascension. We are, after all, both stars and earth. And our promises are always asking to be remade. Come then, let us go up and come down, but always together for this moment and for the love of the next. We are the embodiment of the life force that rises between us. We are the possibility of still rising. We are both stars and earth and our promises are always asking to be remade. This is the time of year in our church community when we make our promises to one another in freedom without threat or coercion or shame or hellfire when we examine our finances and our commitment to one another and we make our pledges. We give so that we are proud, so that our church is strong. When we feel most closely, even this far apart, especially during this year of pandemic, that we are each other's people and that we choose to be each other's people in freedom for those who are here now and for love of those who are yet to be born and yet to come through the door. We know the price, epidemiologically speaking, of ignoring our profound interconnectedness. It weighs heavy upon us how our interdependence is dangerous when we brush it aside. When the economic incentives in our country encourage us to ignore our interdependence, our focus on rights but not responsibilities, imagine if our political economy ran on mutual and free consent instead of on coercion. I won't belabor it except to say that this is the place where we tell each other the truth, where we draw strength from the spirit and from our common bond to look reality in the face, no matter how painful, where we join together to make something beautiful, even out of ashes, when we say yes to life and to the power of community, the possibility vibrating in us and among us even far apart because there is also this promise that we make and have been making. It's in our bodies now as if it ever wasn't. I will wear a mask to keep you safe. I will reach out because I signed up on the list to make some phone calls. I will share my art and worship to uplift you and encourage you. I will lend my voice to the virtual choir to bathe you in song. I will take the step to join the church, to come on Sunday, to learn more about this community that I mostly know online, like those of you in our new member class. I am ready, I'm ready to live my life day after day in response to this fundamental truth. We are already each other's people. Imagine a world that ran like that. I have heard it said there is no such thing as other people's children. Perhaps there is no such thing as other people at all. Where you go, I go. What you do affects me. Your divine is also already mine. And the transforming power of love is the height of it. 
and holds us all and will not let us go. Let us live our lives in response. May it be so for you and so for us all. Amen. The words to our hymn this morning are taken directly from the book of Ruth. The words will be in the chat and I invite you to join me when you are comfortable. I will sing this song through three times. <clears throat> Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie, and your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. Where you go, I will go, beloved. Where you go, I will go. And where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. Where you lie, I will lie, beloved. Where you lie, I will lie. And your people are my people. Your people are mine. Your people are my people. Your divine, my divine. One of the ways that we live out our mission to 